It's been seven months since the first COVID-19 case was confirmed in South Africa. 1,883 new COVID-19 cases uh, were reported in the last uh, in the last night here in South Africa, the National Health Ministry confirming that the COVID-19 count stands now at 679,716 cases. I'm joined by Dr. Ridwan Suleiman, who's a senior researcher at the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research to discuss the latest statistics and trends now that the country has moved to lockdown level one. A very good evening to you and thank you so much for speaking to us, uh, Dr. Suleiman. So given this uh, rising in numbers since October began, are we seeing an increase in cases or not? I, I, I just want to get a sense of how you are reading the figures. Good evening, Sapiso. Um, thanks for having me. In general, um, the statistics show that there's no significant increase uh, during this transition from level two to level one. Um, we now two weeks since we've moved to level one restrictions um, and the general downward trend in the parameters has um, has continued. Okay. Um, and the positive news is, is that there's no significant uh, changes during this transition. All right, so what we have there up there is uh, the average daily COVID-19 cases per week. So just take us through those figures. Why you say they are not rising, they're more leveling out? Yes, so um, as you can see from the graph, um, we've been on this general downward trend um, for the last um, nine to 10 weeks or so. Um, the second last uh, bar uh, from on this graph shows the first week of level one restrictions. Um, and we can see a slight uptick in the number of confirmed COVID-19 mm. cases. Um, but um, fortunately, in the last week, we're seeing that that uh, number of confirmed cases has gone down again. Um, so in, in general, we're seeing this, this plateauing or leveling off again um, of number of confirmed cases. Mm. Um, and as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, the positive news is no significant uh, increase during this transition. So to Dr. Suleiman, I want to stay on this particular graph before we move on to the next one, because uh, there on the last one, I see the figures at 1,290. But I've just read that the figures for the past 24 hours have gone up to 1,883. And I know uh, these graphs are your latest. So this graph that we're looking at now, so next week, do you think it would have changed? Will there be another slight uptick? Um, it's important not to read too much into the, the daily numbers. Mm. Um, and what this graph shows is the, the seven-day rolling average, um, or rather the, the average for, for each week. Um, so while there may be um, a, another uptick um, in, the, in the coming week, um, it's important to, to take into account weekend effects as well. And what we have seen um, throughout um, the, the okay. pandemic is that the, the numbers are lower over weekends. And indeed, the WHO did say when they were visiting us that we need to rather focus on the seven-day uh, daily average. So let's talk about testing. How much has been done daily and how does it compare to the peak period? So we're seeing a significant reduction in the number of daily tests that are being conducted. Um, we're averaging between 15 to 20,000 tests per day since, um, since around level two restrictions, in fact. And this is uh, significantly lower than uh, what we were doing during the peak um, of our COVID-19 um, infections. Um, and the, the primary reason for this is reduced demand for testing. Um, and uh, as has been pointed a number of times, the South Africa has had strict testing criteria um, up until level one, in fact. Um, and testing has been prioritized uh, for more serious cases. Um, and that, um, th that um, has now, in fact, meant that there's a reduced demand for testing of, of late. Um, as you can see from the graph that you put up now. Hmm. And hopefully we put up the next graph uh, just as quickly, Dr. Suleiman. So uh, we're talking about testing, but now I want us to look at uh, the rate of test positivity per week and how we interpret the figures there. So let's put up that graph now. 
Sure. Um, so, so just um, to point out, going back to the testing quickly, I, I think we will start to see that the testing numbers will increase now that the testing criteria has been relaxed um, and as the strategy to, to manage the outbreak has been um, changing since, since level one. Um, so now looking at the test positivity rate um, as shown uh, by the graph here. I think that for me, this is the most important parameter that I watch out for most closely. Um, again, we're seeing a general downward trend um, since our peak in, in mid-July. Um, during the first week of level one restrictions, as you can see uh, from the second last bar, um, there was a slight uptick again, where the test positivity rate for that week was 9.8%. Um, but fortunately, again, that's gone down over the last week to 8.6%. Um, so the test positivity rate essentially is the number of, of new cases as a percentage of, of new tests. Um, so while this number is hovering uh, around 10%, um, it is still still high compared to global standards. Um, but it is significantly less than what we were seeing uh, during the peak where it was touching up to 30%. Mm. And, and you're saying we should watch for, for this number, why? Um, because the number of tests um, daily does fluctuate on a daily basis. And so um, that influences the number of confirmed cases that we see daily. Um, and also, as mentioned, we, we see um, changes during the week, such as decrease in number of tests and cases over weekends. So, so those two parameters, whilst important, they do fluctuate a lot. So looking at this parameter, which is the test positivity rate, um, it's a more consistent measure to, to look out for. Um, and it allows us then to, um, to just look at the percentage of tests that are coming back positive um, and to, to then pick up any uh, trends upwards or downwards. Hmm. OK, let's talk about the cases of deaths. You say there is a slight uptick. What do you put that down to? Yes, so, so as you can see from, from the graph that, that's been put up now, the, the average number of daily deaths um, this past week has gone up slightly um, compared to previous weeks. And that's, um, that's a bit of an anomaly bucking the trend that we normally see where the number of deaths um, usually lags and follows the number of cases, lagging it by about three weeks. Um, so the, the, the latest increase over the past week, if you we look further into the reasons for that, what we would see is that there was uh, a bit of a backlog in, in reporting. Um, and at the beginning of the last week, there were a number of um, deaths that were um, reported due to backlogs, particularly in the free state. So um, I think that probably explains mm. the slight uptick in the number of deaths and um, therefore, we shouldn't read too much then into this um, slight uptick this mm. last week. So, Professor Suleiman, what about the rate of hospitalizations? Can we take a look at that and what that means? Um, sure. So, the, the hospitalizations, again, is a, it's a very useful measure. Um, and it, it allows us to, again, um, track the, the trend in, in the spread of, of COVID-19 infections. Um, what we're seeing um, from this graph, these are the, the daily um, hospital admissions based on the NICD Sentinel, Sentinel Hospital surveillance. Um, again, we're seeing a downward trend in the number of hospital admissions, um, significantly lower than, than the number of admissions during the peak um, of the pandemic. Um, what you may see uh, in this graph is um, a slight up, uptick over the last few weeks, uh, but the nuance in this particular data is the number of hospitals that are actually reporting to this surveillance. Um, at the beginning of September, or at least a month ago, um, whilst 100% of private hospitals were reporting to this um, surveillance, only about 50% of public hospitals were being accounted for. Um, oh and later, it's more than 90% of hospitals accounting for that. So I think that explains probably the slight increase in admissions. Right. Uh, we've put up the next graph, so let me talk to you through that, uh, Dr. Suleiman. If you could just explain what we're seeing here in terms of the total number of numbers of recovery and how looking at the cumulative cases, the deaths, recoveries and active totals, what, 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 what does that mean? What are we seeing here? 
Sure. So, so this graph kind of gives an overview of where we stand in general in terms of confirmed cases in South Africa. Um, what we're seeing on this graph um, are the total number of confirmed cases by the black line on top. Um, and you can see that uh, whilst it was increasing exponentially uh, uh, for quite some time, uh, that curve has bent and slowed down. Um, the, the curve in green tr tracks the number of recoveries, um, and that number has now touched on to over 90% of, of um, the confirmed cases have now um, recovered, fortunately. Um, the blue line um, going further down the graph, that tracks the number of active cases. Um, and that's essentially the number of confirmed cases minus the recoveries minus the deaths. The deaths are shown in red at the bottom. Um, so the, the deaths they account for um, sadly two and a half percent of, of cases have been have now confirmed um, COVID-19 deaths. Um, and the blue line is the active cases, which has gone down. And currently we have just around 50,000 active cases um, in South Africa. Thank you so much for uh, explaining that to us, uh, Dr. Suleiman, and I hope we now also have a better understanding of where we talk about the cumulative daily cases and what it means over that seven-day period uh, and how to read those figures that, as you say, we really are indeed leveling off just because we're seeing an increase of uh, cases daily does not mean that the numbers are necessarily going up. Thank you so much for your time and your insights, Dr. Ridwan. Suleiman is a senior researcher at the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research, that's the CSIR. Now